بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته A very strange incident happened at the time of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم He was sitting with the rest of the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم and he said A man will enter upon you who is among the inhabitants of paradise. Shortly a man entered and he is not one of the famous Sahaba that you'd expect. The next day the Messenger وسلم, repeated the same. He says, now a man from the inhabitant of paradise will enter upon you. And surprisingly it was the same man. The third day, the Messenger وسلم, repeated the same phrase, and the same man entered. One of the young Sahaba, عنهم, the early Sahaba, Abdullah bin Amr bin Al-As, may Allah Almighty be pleased with both of them. Between him and his father was 12 years only. So his father young, uh, married young. His name in the beginning was Al-As, and the Messenger وسلم, changed it to Abdullah. So he was a clever man. Obviously, he's the son of Amr ibn al-As. Amr ibn al-As, one of the most clever <coughs> and geniuses among the Arab at that time. So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he thought, I want to know what is so special about this man. So he came to him and he said, my uncle, I had an argument with my father and I took an oath that I will not enter the house for three days. Can I stay with you? We have a rule in Islam, general rule, that a guest has the right to stay for three days. A question asked. After that, it's up to you to keep him or not. So he said, welcome. He went home. He stayed, I started observing him. What is so special about this man? And I didn't see anything special. Not too much salah, not too much fasting, remember of salah. He will do the obligations, maybe some of the sunnahs, and that's it. However, he did mention, I noticed two things. The first one, when he wakes up in the middle of the night, he remembers Allah Almighty and says, Allahu Akbar, and then goes to sleep. Anytime he stirs in his sleep, he says, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, and that's it. And I've never heard him say anything bad. He never speaks except something, something good. So he was in control of his tongue. But still, not too much. I haven't seen much. So the third day after I finished, I said to him, my uncle, by Allah Almighty, I had no problem with my father. The only thing is that I heard the Messenger وسلم, says so and so for three consecutive days. And every day you would appear. So I wanted to know, what is your secret? What is so special about you in the sight of Allah Almighty that the Messenger وسلم, gives you the glad tiding that you will be among the people of paradise? Is there anything? No. This is me. Whatever you have seen. However, I do not carry any enmity in my heart for anybody. I do not carry in my heart any enmity hatred for anybody and I do not envy any person for whatever goodness that Allah Almighty gave him two things in the other narration I do not cheat or carry cheat in my heart for anybody so what we have here three etiquettes all of them are of the hearts no hatred heart feeling or enmity in the heart and no envy for whatever Allah Almighty blessed people with. Above all of that. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran about the winners in the hereafter, none will be successful of them. All your property, all your belonging, all your wealth, all your family members and children, none will benefit you in the hereafter. Except the one who comes to Allah Almighty 
with a clean or pure heart, a sound heart, a good heart. It's all about here. One of uh, the scholars, he used to say, says the difference between us and the Sahaba radiallahu anhu is about just one hand span or less, just about this much. That is the only difference we have between us and them. And it's about here. They concentrated about the heart. We concentrated about what is below. <laughs> that is the only difference. You see, the main concern, the Messenger وسلم, clarified this point to us. He says, Allah Almighty does not look at your appearances, your wealth, your social status, your fathers and mothers, whosoever, none. Allah Almighty regards your hearts. That is what Allah Almighty is observing. The auditing is here. All the auditing that will be done is about here. So this is something that is very important. And this hadith from the Messenger of Allah, a clarification here too. To pay attention to this important characteristics. So do we see here, he is not carrying any enmity. means he is forgiving everybody. He is pardoning and forgiving everyone. What does it mean to forgive and pardon? It means someone did a mistake against you without any justification. And you have full power to take revenge or make him pay for it, yet you forgive him for the sake of Allah Almighty. This is something that Allah Almighty ordered the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, himself. And he said to teach us, take to pardoning. and order what is good and turn away from the ignorant three orders from Allah Almighty to the Messenger وسلم. the first one take to pardoning whenever it's possible to pardon pardon take to pardoning this is your life motto and this was the characteristic of the Messenger وسلم, as explained by the mother of the believers, the lady Aisha radiallahu anha, the beloved wife of the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, when she was asked about the characteristics of the Messenger وسلم, she said that his characteristics and morals were the best. And when she explained, she says, he does not return a wrongdoing with a wrongdoing. Rather, he will forgive and pardon. And then he will do goodness. That is the etiquette of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the middle of what a person can do. Forgiveness. It is not the best. And it's not the worst. Among the best, yes. But that is just about the middle or slightly above the middle. Means if a person is planning to be among those who are considered muhsineen from the Islamic point of view, so are the doers of good always? This is the first step. The steps, in short, or in summary, or in concise, the first one is taking revenge, God forbid. Second one is carrying a grudge, or a hatred, or getting angry without taking a revenge, which is less than it, but it's still, it is it. Third one is taking justice, seeking justice and making your full right. Now, these are also steps, but we are talking about the summary of it. Then, it is about controlling your anger. And then forgiving. And then doing good to the one who did a sin to you. Or a mistake to you. These are the levels. So, we are talking about pardoning or forgiving. This is something that is recommended by Allah Almighty to the Prophet and Messenger. And recommended by the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the Sahaba, radiallahu Uqba bin Amr al-Juhani radiallahu an The Messenger of Allah advised him with three advices. The first one is about pardoning and forgiving. He said, O oh, Uqba bin Amr, pardon the one who does an injustice to you. Someone who has done an injustice to you. Forgive him. Listen, and give the one who denies you your rights. Someone who is not giving you your rights, still give him. Don't make that affect your goodness. You still do the goodness that Allah Almighty ordered you to do. See? 
and keep a connection with the one who is cutting it off or cutting you off. Among the family members now, this happens a lot, sadly. So some people are not reaching out to you except when they are in need. Apart from that, they are cutting you off. Does that give you the right to cut them off as well? The Messiah Sallallahu says no. You do your part. They will be responsible about their part. But for you, you are dealing with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So what do we have here? Pardon and forgive the one who has done an injustice to you. This pardoning is required in all relations. But the most important ones are highlighted by Allah Almighty in the Holy Quran. We can summarize them in this short session. The first one, among the two spouses, the husband and wife. Why am I saying this is because sadly we are seeing a trend now. Sometimes families are destroyed because of tribal things. Little problems that are arising here and there. Sometimes repeated, sometimes not. But the idea, that is not how a family life goes. And if you go to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained to us in the Holy Quran, we find one very surprising ayah, extremely surprising ayah. The first moment I realized the meaning, I was overtaken by the deepness of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. You see, family life is considered, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained to us, a very heavy and strong covenant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as explained. But the ayah we are talking about is speaking about husband and wife on paper only before consummating the marriage. Before having any relation, before the marriage ceremony, none. They went, they proposed, they agreed, they have done the pillars of a marriage, whether on paper or verbally, and that's it. And now they are deciding to separate, okay? You are following? That is the ayah. The ayah is speaking about this situation. You have already married, but you have never again been together. You have never consumed the, mar the marriage, and now you are separating. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the obligation is the right. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And to pardon and forgive is closer to taqwa, or nearer to taqwa. To pardon is nearer to piety. Fine? <coughs> then the, the idea is, and do not forgive the goodness that happened between you. SubhanAllah. What happened between them? Nothing. But simply agreeing to be together and simply having that contract to live together, although nothing happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not forget that. This is a righteousness and goodness that happened to you, and to pardon in any of the dispute that happens at that moment is closer to taqwa. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, the cousin of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa says, the one who pardons among the two spouses is the one who is closer to piety and taqwa. Nowadays, we are saying families that have been living together for 10, 20, 30 years, more or less. And then small things are happening and now they are bringing the worst side of each other. What is going on? You have lived together. You have stayed together. In the Arabic proverb, we had among the Arabic tradition, if you eat with someone or drink with him, you can never betray him forever, even if you have right against him. This is something that is so serious, we have had food together. And this is a trick that sometimes people utilize. An example coming uh, to, to a guest and there is an enmity, an old enmity or revenge between them from the old ages and he says, I will not touch that food until, for example, you promise me to fulfill whatever I'm saying or whatever I'm demanding. He says, okay, fine. He says, forgive me for what I've done, so and so. That's it. Otherwise, I'm not going to. The idea is you have lived together, literally. The closest two people could be on earth ever. That relation is closer than the relation of a father or a mother to a child or anybody. None. 
So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not forgive that Mizana. Forgive and pardon before the marriage happened. He does not speak about what happens after the marriage. This is so serious, it can never compare to that. You understood the meaning? Yes. So that is why the pardoning is extremely important in this relation. Instead of demanding a little more money or a little less or a little less, fine, no problem. We have been together for quite a long time. This is the least I could do. This is the, the etiquette. This is the etiquette. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the divorce to happen with graciousness and exchange of gifts. Literally, that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. But what we are seeing is <laughs> unbelievable. It's like fighting only. <laughs> that is not the etiquette of Muslims. You have to keep it in your mind. I remember this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining to us. The next after that, of course, the family members and the relatives and so on, all the way until it reaches every single believer on earth. You should never carry in your heart any hard feeling against them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us a very beautiful dua to say and repeat, O oh Allah Almighty, do not make in our hearts any hard feeling for any believers. Any one of the believers, you don't have hard feeling. He already shares with you so much. It doesn't mean you don't dispute with them. It doesn't mean you do not disagree with them. It doesn't mean that if you are a scholar and you are discussing and tell them that this is wrong and this is not the truth and this is the right and defend what you believe is right. But still, that does not give you the right to have a hard feeling against them. And like what we are seeing here, so the two people are disputing and each one is promising the other hellfire, either if they are gods, God forbid. Allah Almighty did not give this right to anybody except to himself. But this is what we are saying. This person is so and so and that person is so and so. No, that is not the etiquette of believers ever. You could disagree with him as much as you like. I don't have the right to have that hard feeling in your heart as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us. Furthermore, Allah Almighty wanted us actually to deal this way with anyone on earth, even with your enemy. So much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us very clearly that the righteousness or the goodness and the bad things are never equal. So face off or turn away the evil with goodness. If an evil is done to you and you return the evil, an insult is done to you, you return the insult. Now instead of one problem, we have two. There was one insult on earth, now we have two insults. One evil, now we have double the evil. What is the benefit? None. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, return the, the evil with goodness. So much so that the one with whom you have enmity is as a close friend. The enmity, your enemy. This is the etiquette. But sadly, we are not paying attention. And furthermore, if you are in control of anybody, ever, Allah Almighty gave you a position, there are some employees, workers working under you, some servants are working for you and so on, how do you deal with them? Remember the pardoning, the auditing that you have to do, the self-supervision that you have over yourself, is more important when you are in a position of power. The more strength you have, the more power you have, the more you need to keep a check on that. Because it will be very easy for you to do a mistake without noticing. I will give you an example. Some people are having servants nowadays, worker working for them. Or sometimes even if you employ someone temporarily or for an action, a little thing to, to be done. For example, taking your car to be washed by somebody or your clothes, or item to be carried, whatever it is, no matter what, whether it is temporary or you have a servant that is permanent with you. In all cases, a question was asked to the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, how many times should we pardon the servant? Before punishing him or before uh, reproaching him or before whatever it is. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remained silent. They repeated the question after a little while, O Messenger of Allah, how many times should we pardon the servant? The Messenger of Allah remained silent. 
he was asked the third time, O Messenger of Allah, how many times should we pardon a servant? The Messenger وسلم, said, pardon the servant every day 70 times. How many times? We don't pardon our children 70 times now. <laughs> See the problem? Yeah. You tell the child once, twice, third time, probably the fourth, you, are, you already lose control. That is not the etiquette. We need to work a lot and work harder on ourselves to purify our hearts and correct our actions, our feelings, our reactions. These servants, you tell him to do something and he does it wrong. You tell him to do something and he repeats the mis same mistakes or different mistakes 70 times. And it doesn't mean that the 71, okay, we're waiting, calculating. Ah, 71, wait, come here. No. 70 in Arabic is a huge number. Unspecified huge number. Like when you are talking to somebody and uh, tell him, I have told you 100 times, don't do that. It doesn't mean that it is precisely 100. It means a lot. So here the Prophet says a lot, as much as you could. That is why we have single narrate. The Messenger وسلم, as explained by the wife of the Messenger وسلم, she says he never, ever hate or reproach a servant, ever. With all the duties, all the pressure upon the Messenger وسلم, during time of peace, time of war, time of stress, time of happiness, and never. Not a single time. And once he saw one of the Sahaba عن, hitting a servant, and the Messenger وسلم, was extremely upset. And he says, remember that Allah Almighty has more power over you than you have power over him. What would you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why the Messenger of Allah is pointing us to this point, is uh, pointing our attention to this point, is because Allah Almighty is going to deal with you in the same way you are dealing with people. Full stop. Well, you are keeping a check on the slightest mistake of a person, prepare yourself. Allah Almighty will ask you for the slightest mistake that you have. So what do you do? What about if you pardon people? Allah Almighty will pardon you. Don't worry. Simple. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran. وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ In the, ayah, in the other ayah, وَاللَّهُ عَفُوٌ قَدِيرٌ Allah Almighty is pardoning and forgiving. So tell them to pardon and forgive. Verily Allah Almighty is pardoning and forgiving. Means if you will pardon, Allah Almighty will pardon you. Remember this, Allah Almighty has more strength, more power over you than you have over anybody else. That is, when before doing anything, remember Allah Almighty will, tell, will do the same to you. Same mistake of them, same reaction. Is this what you want? Now he says, no, I want forgiveness. Okay, fine, then forgive. Pardon. There are many benefits for pardoning apart from that. So this is, Allah Almighty will pardon you. But there are many others, some of them in this world. The first one. Pardoning and forgiving is the shortest path to happiness, tranquility, peace of mind. Among the biggest problems of today all over the world is anxiety and restlessness and lack of tranquility and peace of mind. Worldwide, they are calling it the disease of this age. Almost everyone on earth is having something to worry. Lots of worries and anxieties and fear from the future or whatever it is. One of the easiest ways to eradicate all of that is to pardon and forgive. Purify your heart, don't worry. You will have a very restful and peaceful sleep at night. If you take your right, even just fully, entirely, without doing any harm, when you come to sleep, um, why didn't I forgive? Why did I do that? Maybe I shouldn't, isn't it? That is when you are taking your full right without doing any harm. Imagine if, God forbid, you might have done more. So that is why pardoning is very important for you. And that is why it is narrated in a poem by uh, Imam Shafi'i, uh, 
I mean, Allah Almighty rest his soul peace. He says, when I have pardoned and forgive, I never had any hard feeling against anyone. I have saved myself from catering lots of worries and lots of uh, anxiety. Myself. The idea is I don't want to do it. As one of the teachers did once an exercise to her students. So she wanted to teach them about the, the ideas of pardon and forgiving. And says, anyone who does not like anybody around him, take one fruit, whatever fruit you like, and put it in a bag and carry it with you. All right, that is to represent that that is this person. And keep it with you for one week only. Okay, fine. Children like to play games, and this is a beautiful game. So uh, one, one of them is having an enmity with one single student, two, three, four, each one, huh? and he's carrying it. First day, second day, some of them get tired, so you have to still carry it with you. Keep it with you. Next day, starts rotting a little, third day, and it's given a smell and so on. It says, no, you have to fulfill the one week. Beside the heaviness and the bad smell and so on, by the end of the week, the family is complain complained and she explained to them that this is a very important moral uh, story or, or practical education to them. When they finish, by the finishing of the week, says, okay, see, this is the problem with enmity and hatred. You are carrying it inside your heart. You are not seeing how bad it is for you. It is rotting you from the inside like this. She is not far from the truth. Now it is proved that the sad and negative feelings that a person is carrying inside him is one of the main causes of lots of illnesses. So the first one is you will benefit from that yourself. You will have peace of mind. How long you are going to live in this world? Is there time for enmities and hatred and hard feelings? Ah, fine. So you lost a little money here, you lost a little thing, then what? Fine. You are alive, alhamdulillah. You still have in your mind. Great. End of story. Second thing is it is one of the criteria that uh, the reward for it by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dignity and high status in this world and in the hereafter. People who are seeking revenge are hated even by people who are close to them. That's right. You are driving one day, somebody cuts you off and you want to cut him off as well. Who dislikes that most? Your wife sitting beside you and your children behind you and your friends. What are you doing? Nobody likes that. You understand? But if you simply say, may Allah Almighty forgive him, please, have your way, fine. Maybe he's in a hurry, maybe have something. How will they do that? Say, mashallah, this is it. The Messenger وسلم, made a promise, he says, swearing about three things. The first one, the Messenger وسلم, saying, I'm taking an oath about it. One of them, the Messenger وسلم, says, and Allah Almighty will never increase a person except in dignity and high status for pardoning others. You pardon them, Allah Almighty will increase you in that. The increase is in this world and the hereafter. In the hereafter, we have, besides forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have great rewards. In one narration, in the hereafter, it will be said, let those who have their rewards upon Allah Almighty, unpaid, unpaid reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them, let them stand. Those who forgave people will stand. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, as for those who pardons and do goodness, their reward is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their reward is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next one and the greatest one is be loved by Allah Almighty. Those who pardon other people, Allah Almighty love them. As Allah Almighty mentioned in the Holy Quran. So we need to emphasize these ideas to ourselves and to people around us, educate our young, especially about it. Sadly, many people now are disconnected from the morals and etiquettes of Islam. Before you used to learn that from your father and your forefathers and so on, practically in life and socializing and so on. Nowadays, they don't get that. Many people are living by themselves in small families, secluded, no relation with the parents, uh, or sometimes no relation with the neighbors and, and friends and so on, living in uh, a second homeland, then the first homeland and so on. Lots of things they are missing. One of this is the practical aspect of the religion. 
the practical morals and dealing. You have right to seek full justice. However, that is nothing. You are not going to get anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you expect any goodness from Allah Almighty, you need to learn pardoning. May Allah Almighty make us among those who pardon others. And may Allah Almighty reward us for that. May Allah Almighty increase our knowledge and guide us through His divine truth. Make us good for ourselves and everyone around us. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.